Welcome uh, to the Elwood City Area School District. Welcome to our boardroom and welcome to uh, Chalk. Uh, curriculum program that we're looking at today, the software program. For our folks online, this is very informal. I have a handful mix of administrators and teachers in the, our boardroom here at Elwood City. And we're just kind of trying to review and look at, you know, basically what our journey was when we started with Chalk and what we did. Um, how we kind of implemented the first few phases of it and where we're going with it down the road. Um, I'm very excited to have everyone here today. Also like to thank our superintendent, Mr. Mancini. Back of the room there, Superintendent Mancini. Uh, very big on us leading the charge in the district to look at curriculum and look at how we are mapping and how we're using these tools. Um, we have been a very, very traditional district for quite some time. Uh, I myself, I'm an administrator with the district. I'm one of the high school principals. I work with curriculum. I'm one of the school. I'm the school safety and security director. Uh, do the cyber school. Do a little bit of everything. So I've got my uh, my hat that changes all the time, and I kind of like it that way because my mind moves that. I, I'm sure my kids would probably say I'm a little ADHD. So that's that's always a good thing. I keep kind of keep moving, and uh, it's fast paced enough that it keeps me interesting and keeps me interested in what I'm doing. So I enjoy and live the job every day and kind of live a different life every day. So that's kind of a, a real neat thing. So just starting off the quote today with uh, Albert Einstein, kind of that imagination, you know, imagining where we're going, what we're doing in the district, and kind of always looking towards the future to be a little bit more innovative and to try to do some different things for the school. Um, we had started, uh, when I first came, we had our curriculum in three ring binders, and it was very, very traditional, uh, wasn't very shared. I think we actually still have some up in the safe uh, upstairs that uh, are still earmarked for subjects and, and categories. Uh, then we made the evolution to go online with our curriculum and probably about the second or third year here <coughs> got the charge to kind of help out and, and try to figure out how to get that curriculum operationalized online. So we kind of put it into a, a, a warehouse. It was kind of our next logical step. Uh, Mr. Mancini, myself, uh, Principal Lape, we looked at a bunch of different programs out there and <clears throat> kind of settled on one that our teachers worked through. And unfortunately, our math department are typically our guinea pigs for <laughs> trying out new things. So we kind of pilot with our math department. So when we started that online process, we started with a math department. When we started our online process with chalk, we also started with our math department. So I have two teacher representatives here today, uh, Ms. Addie Sokol and Ms. Heather Brest, that will talk to you a little bit about what it looks like from the teacher end. Nothing major, just kind of showing you what it looks like when a teacher goes through to do this, what they're working on, what they're looking at, and then <clears throat> kind of the piece that we really like that I've been seeing is it adds a, a collaboration piece to the curriculum that we didn't have with our <clears throat> older program. So we're real excited to bring that and, and kind of look at it, and we're real excited what Chalk is doing for us at this point. So what is Chalk? Just kind of a broad overview, kind of a helicopter view, the administrator view. What I'm seeing is it's, it's really an innovation in curriculum writing and how we write curriculum and how we share curriculum. So that sharing part, although we had that capability before, it's different now because it, it, the tool itself actually lends to a lot more collaboration when planning and sharing and, and doing things. And that's something that we're not used to, uh, especially with the old tool that we were using. It integrates more instruction. It's kind of uh, a little bit better of a warehouse for where the planning process takes place in terms of the actual curriculum mapping and the lesson planning. And then the third point, it kind of gives that real-time insight into learning, where students are tracking, looking at the gaps and lapses in curriculum, just looking at how things happen in general. So we're real excited to see those kind of pieces come together. We're nowhere near experts in chalk. Um, again, we just piloted with one department. I had about nine teachers work on it. We actually brought it in through uh, grades 5 through 12. So we started with our 5th uh, our and 6th grade teachers down at the elementary school. Our high school uh, math department kind of got together and started kind of doing a little bit more co-planning. We kind of started the process over the summer. Uh, we brought the teachers in for a couple different trainings. Chalk has been phenomenal to work with. They've come in. Uh, they've sat down with us. They've customized the tool as we needed customization. They've kind of built out what we've needed to have happen. They did a really nice job by us, and that's why I kind of wanted to reciprocate and, and explain this today and basically what we're going through. 
So where are we at? Well, welcome to Lawrence County. Welcome to Western Pennsylvania. Shrinking budgets, um, not a lot of time to dedicate to curriculum, to resources, to writing, to doing all that stuff. So when you don't have the time, obviously we look to leverage software, we look to leverage programs, and we look to find different things that we can use to help make our lives a little bit easier. That's essentially what Chalk does for us in terms of curriculum writing and the processes that we go through. Um, been very excited to see some of the teachers really kind of catch on fire with it and understand it and really use it and leverage it to their advantage. Um, always, you know, you have fast adopters and you have folks that struggle sometimes, but I think the system in and of itself with Chalk was pretty intuitive. Our teachers uh, moved in and out of the system pretty rapidly. They were able to port maps over, able to pull into standards, able to really construct uh, viable content pretty easily, I, I, I would think. I think it would be agreeable. Um, again, I know the process as much as I know the process, just to help them and kind of get along down the path, but I did want to bring two teachers in today to make sure they explain their side of it and just kind of how that happens for them. I think they know it the best out of all of us, obviously at this point, they've worked with it a lot longer. Um, we also have made some time uh, in their day, we have rotations, we actually have an uh, advisory period at the high school when uh, our department rotates out, we have the opportunity to give them some extra curriculum mapping time. So they get essentially a half hour every week to go in and, and work and, and do some extra mapping and to work with Chuck in and of itself. Uh, I think it's valuable that you know if we know how important curriculum mapping is, we know how important it is to identify our gaps within our curriculum. Um, the district has adopted, we adopted a brand new math program, K through 12. Um, it was a huge purchase for us. So we've had some growing pains mathematically. Um, it was a nice pickup, but it's a new series and it's new content. So we thought this was a nice jump off point for Chalk to help us get down the road a little bit further with that curriculum piece and to do what we had to do. So again, looking to ways to, you know, bridge, we don't have a dedicated curriculum director. <laughs> Uh, we don't have we don't have an assistant superintendent. Uh, we don't have a lot of different things that that happen in in the course of a, a typical district our size. But the software and the programming that we can use with Chalk doesn't essentially replace people, but it just gives you a better way to organize. And it gives you a better way to communicate and collaborate. And I think that's really important in today's district and kind of our structure. It was important for us to look at it. So that's why we kind of moved down that path and started to explore some new options. Classroom teaching doesn't happen in a vacuum anymore. There's a lot of collaboration, there's a lot of sharing, and I know I taught for 12 years, I've been an administrator for 13 now. Um, I've run cyber schools before I came into the Elwood City Area School District. It's very unique in education, not that it's changed, but it occurs differently now. You know, we've taken our teachers from a very standard lecture-based and we've put them into more of a collaborative environment. Um, all of our teachers are used to Google Classroom, they're used to talking online with students now, increased communication, all those different things. And when you start to look at that, sometimes the tools that you have to map curriculum don't necessarily match what your expectations are for your students or your staff. So that's why Chalk was a nice pickup and a nice look for us because that tool actually replicates what we're asking our teachers to do with our students and vice versa and our students collaborate with our teachers. It just makes sense to have that kind of curriculum available at your fingertips and to be able to share it to the level where we've never been able to do that before. So um, again, it's that real-time collaboration tool. We're looking for gaps and lapses that can be planned for. And then a lot of the time, that, that bottom one, <laughs> a lot of the times when I worked with teachers with curriculum mapping, one of the big things was, I swear I taught that to my kids last year. And that next teacher says they had never picked that up. And we always used to have that kind of inner department argument. And I get that. I think that's kind of natural. Um, I think that's part of the process. But what Chalk does is it kind of provides an online accountability for the teachers. Um, I know when I have to share something, if I'm sharing it on a Google Doc and I know I'm responsible for it, and I have to post that work online, sometimes I'm going back to be a little bit more critical of myself, to be more critical of my work, how I address it, how I type it up. Um, I think it's kind of a neat idea to see that planning process that they go through. In our own curriculum mapping tool, our teachers kind of just listed standards, listed units, kind of listed lockstep. This changes because 
teachers can have a high, almost any level of, of sharing that they want within the chalk program. So they're able to see each other's maps, they're able to edit and add suggestions and add comments and work back and forth within a system that we never had access to before in our old, old curriculum mapping tool. So that, that kind of eliminates some of this for any administrator in the room, which is kind of nice. Some things that have been said, uh, just feedback from teachers. We have a differentiated supervision model here, so our teachers have kind of, we led the math department this year down into the road of looking at chalk and, and piloting it and evaluating it. Uh, I went through and got the feedback from the teachers as I am evaluating pretty much every math teacher in the district this year. And, you know, I would say almost 100% of the feedback that I've got on their supervision models have been positive from chalk. Um, everyone has uh, submitted like a, kind of a beginning of the year goal when we've already done a midpoint in January. Uh, and now they're actually closing out their DSM. But all the comments that I've read have been very, very positive. The one negative that I saw was that it was just time consuming. It is time consuming. Curriculum mapping can be time consuming. And we know that whether it's Chalk or whether it's Program X, it's difficult to get your program in, in ported over. And, and Chalk actually did a wonderful job of working with our old maps and pulling information into the system so that it wasn't as time consuming for the teachers. So like, I like right out of our teachers, uh, easy to do, just takes time. Uh, like the features offered, like what has, Chalk has to offer, it's very user friendly um, and they definitely understand what they're doing pretty quick within the process. So it didn't take them long to get up into the program and actually start porting in maps and figuring out how to use this and how to collaborate. Uh, very comfortable looking at the maps, looking at what we've used, getting some more up-to-date features with sharing, um, certainly more to learn. The Chalk has great resources, great tutorials online from Chalk also that if our teachers ever get lost, it's a click of a button, they can go in, reevaluate what they're doing, look at what they're doing, and then go back and make the adjustments as they need within their own programs. Again, we started that process grades five through 12 this year. Um, we did start with, because of that new math series, I thought it was important to kind of start pinning those, those sides down. Um, it's different, it's a lot more Common Core related than the old series. We actually went with the same series we had 10, 15 years ago but the series, according to our math teachers, has probably dramatically changed in its delivery and the content that it's asking for. It's compacted much more. It gives us a lot more different kinds of ways to access materials. Um, it's the latest and the greatest. And we have the best teachers that try to work through it and make sense of it every day. But I know it's cumbersome. And a, and a tool like Chalk actually adds to their availability to make that transition a little bit easier and to really thoughtfully plan that, that mapping process. Uh, two teachers that I have here to talk about, Chuck, we've had the breast, you know, she's our great geometry teacher upstairs, and Addie Sokol, she's our algebra teacher, another phenomenal teacher, math teacher. We have an extremely strong math department, thank goodness. Um, we're very proud of the students that we crank out, and we're very proud of the programs that we look at. So I have Addie and Heather here to uh, <clears throat> tell you kind of how they went through the process, maybe show you a little bit of the mapping, and I've talked absolutely way too long, so I'm gonna get off the board here. <laughs> and uh, hopefully uh, Heather and Addie can kind of show you what they've done and let you see what that tool looks like. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Yeah. All right, um, like Mr. Servich said, we're not um, experts. <laughs> we just sort of jumped in and started playing around with it to see what we got. And there's only really a couple spots here that I've even tried to do anything with, and that's mostly just this curriculum part right here, so. Um, this will pull up all the curriculum for everybody in our district has entered in and when they last entered something in and I can go look at any of their curriculum anytime I want um, that they've posted on uh, recently, mine is algebra. So it shows me all my units on this side. I can do a search and look at certain things and see what unit it pops up in. I can search other people's curriculum to see if something pops up in theirs. Um, if I take you to one of my units, this is how it normally sets up and i'll show you how to start a new one but i'll walk you through this first so like i can set initially when i start in i can choose what standards i want and then i can pull them out of a list and it'll pull them right over here um so i have all the standards for the unit and i have all of my i have some empty spaces here because we felt as a department some things were um redundant so we as a department decided not to fill in every one of these boxes so I get, but I, we've typed in all as a department. I can edit this go back any time I want to and save um, different formats that I can go back and check on. So we've typed in different um, 
things that we wanted to see. And so we're all sort of on the same page. We have not filled in stage two because we were doing really just checking it out and we weren't you know, going to dump everything in here if we weren't sure how it was going to go at first. So we didn't go and fill that in. What we did was try to fill in all of our um, curriculum, just like the, the, the units, the order we go in with our lessons, the sections we do, and the tag all the um, um, standards to go with them. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> so this is what it looks like when you start a new unit. And I'm going to have to make this unit number eight. And I think my last unit that I have to do is the analysis. And then what I do is I, it says um, how many lessons. And so initially when I started typing in how many lessons, I would just put how many sections there were in the chapter. But um, there's actually something like a pacing guide that if I estimate about how many days I'm going to be doing it, like how many lessons, for, it will make a um, like a calendar picture and show me how when the units go and when they end and how many I can fit in. And so it's like a more visual picture. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Hey. Creative. Okay, so this is what it looks like blank when I first jump in. And since I clicked eight lessons, if I go to my pacing guide, this shows all of my units and how many days and how many lessons I think they'll take and um, throughout the whole year, how long. And I, I didn't fix um, I didn't fix this unit yet. So these last couple of units are from four and on and it fits yet, but um, they'll actually be a little longer than that. But it'll show me kind of when my, you know, up against the keystone test, which is what we have to take for algebra one in May. So, you know, pacing around this time of the year, especially is super important. Is I'm like counting back the days, how many do I have left, and what I have to get, what is going to fit. <laughs> so um, I can add standards from the PA Common Core, this one. And he has uploaded different types of standards for different people. Mine are just the case and one standard. So mine are like probably the most basic standards. But I can go through here and just sort of identify which standards I want to use. I already did that. So what, this one, this one. This one. Um, okay. And once I add my standards on here, um, we sort of click through stage one. We didn't do transfer. That was the one we skipped, huh, Heather? Yeah, I changed mine. I made a topic mm. question for the whole okay. time chapter. See, that's so smart. Focus on. So I did it that way. But we like, five, so we didn't throw in every box. But we felt that something you're asking to do in the way of asking. So it was just a little bit. And I don't know what this is. I was clicking here today. This is new. Yeah. yeah okay. So yeah. is that how I can eliminate rows and things so I could take this transfer heading out? Yeah, so okay. quick, yeah. I'm afraid to do it because I didn't want to mess up my other stuff this morning when I was looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to do it this morning. I was like, I'm going to lose everything. But uh, yeah, so that's handy now that we can take that stuff out. Um, and these guys have been really easy to work with because if we have a question or if there's something we don't want, we don't want this transfer box in here to figure out a way to make it go away. Like, so now we have this option, we can get rid of it if we want to. So we typed in our, um, you know, yeah, whatever you want to call them. We typed everything in and, the, you know, however you want to phrase it. We typed all that stuff in. Did we do acquisition? I don't think so. Because that's like the same thing, you know, because like if I taught it, they should hypothetically have acquired it. So we some of this we felt like we didn't need to say all of it but i can go through here and i can type in um stage three was long up to days that's where we put all of our lessons right yeah, so i just kept adding different sections in here different lessons in here so i could say like i don't know eight one i don't know probability i'll just take it up because i don't have my book that we didn't get but you know we could also upload if there was a worksheet that maybe the math classes collaborated on she could add that there so that way everybody can use it um, but we haven't gotten that part. We just typed in our lessons. We'll go back and drive. And then her and I, we, we did add the standards each time for the sections as well. Mm -hmm. Even though they're already up at the top, mm -hmm. for a specific lesson section, we want to know of those six or seven standards that went to start, where did we see each of those individually? So we, we yeah. So I clicked standards for this lesson, and they have the whole list of standards, and they have the standards identified for this unit. So I can go into the standard just for this unit and throw that one in there. Um, so it's like a short uh, list. So I don't have to go through the whole list to throw it in there. So it just makes it a lot more streamlined and easier. Um, I can upload things if I want to. I can tag things on there if I had a project or something. If we all had like a 
culminating project for we could throw that in there if we wanted to and it makes it the best part about it i would say is what heather's going to talk about which makes it easier to sort of for, for me to see hers like i could do a keyword search and find who else has talked about linear equations and go find exactly what they did with linear equations whatever they have typed in here so um is there anything i'm forgetting but i was do you think i need because i don't remember yeah, but you're you showed, you showed your face around, that's good. yeah i'm like okay. head in there with all my stuff you, know, you can watch when I last updated this <laughs> and what I did and when I did it. I and also, since she's oh, this is cool too, the standard thing. Yes. So these are all of my standards for um, Pennsylvania uh, Keystone Algebra 1, and I have 31 marks already as being covered. So I can look down here and see which ones were not covered, where's the holes, and, and find out where should they be. I need to go back and recover those. Hello, I'm Heather. Um, I'm going to go through the plan board and um, a little bit of curriculum as well. So um, as Mr. Savage had mentioned, you know, having the extra time to be able to do it, it really can be a very valuable tool because we are doing a lot on Google Classroom. So if we can put all of our, I know Addie and I scan a lot of things and we have some worksheets. So if we can put them on here, which will take time, but that way they're there at your fingertips because I know I'm still a binder person. So all of my chapters, they're scanned, but I know I've leafed through them to find them. So at least if they're uploaded here, you have everything that you need and you've never lost anything. So um, I tried to explore plan board just a little bit uh, by putting two lesson plans on there. So uh, you can go um, here and you can go through your day, your week, your month. So I went ahead and uh, I put one in in October and then I was actually able to share it to Addie. Now I know Addie teaches algebra, but it's nice because we have two other geometry teachers. So if they, um, you know, maybe Mr. Stanley wanted to check on something, he was doing angles and transversals and he didn't want to um, create something on his own. So I went ahead, I put a Khan Academy video in here. I put some valuable resources. I wrote kind of what my lesson plan was for the day. Um, and then at the bottom, I also put some worksheets as well. Um, for some reason, they're not showing right there. They're attachments here. So that way, if um, anybody wanted to borrow my worksheets, they could do that. And that way, it's saving them some time. So as collaborating, we're teaching the same content. It's not changing. It's just the different students that we have where I have maybe a lab and the other teachers do not. So I do like this. Again, it just will take some time to put everything on there, um, but it is helpful for other teachers. So I was able to share that, um, and I shared it with Addie, so that way she could use it, and, and then Mark Stanley as, as well, so they could pull that up, because um, I don't think this aspect, they can look at mine, where curriculum, I can look at anybody's map, but your plan board is your own. So if you want to be willing to share that information you've created, you just would have to share it with them as well. So I really like the plan board. Again, I've only put two lessons, so I did put one in there in December as well. Uh, so it helps. You can upload anything. It's very user friendly. Putting your worksheets on there as PDFs. And like I said, I'm not really sure why they're not showing up at the bottom, but they are there. Uh, the next thing I do want to show as well is curriculum again. Uh, so Addie had mentioned, you know, how to create a topic within her map looking at all the maps that we have. So if I click on my geometry, we can see um, the draft. It doesn't have a draft update because I finished my units. I still have a lot of things to tweak, but I figured at least I published it. So I have a, a main um, draft there that's published. So if I happen to you know, delete something, I at least have a good one to go back to because they will let you every time make a new draft. So I'm not going to make a new draft since I already have mine, but if I view it um, and I'm in here, I can do my search content. So let's say I search for transversals, um, and if I search for that, it's going to highlight uh, topic two or unit two. So I can see, okay, I did parallel lines and um, perpendicular lines. That word transversal is in there, and it highlights it numerous amounts of times. You see that? Okay, so if I'm not in my own map. So yeah, like you do the same search, you just go back. Okay. Yeah, don't really think that. So then advanced map seven. Right. Thank you. Very good. Oh, thank you. That is good to know. Thank you, Addie. Okay. Uh, the next thing too was um, in your more options here. So you can share this. Um, so I could share it with each of you since you're not, um, and maybe if you don't have your chalk mem uh, account right now, if you, you can make a public uh, link so that way anyone could click, you can get to my map specifically and look at and research anything there. Um, if you would like a link to that, you can um, do that by sharing. Uh, the next thing too is to compare maps. So let's say um, my along the left here and I wanna compare it to Addie's. I can pick her algebra nine there and compare them. You can list a bunch across. Um, I haven't really searched, I mean, you don't have transversal in there, but let's say, let's say linear um, Addie and see if where we see that overlap between 
am I might not answer. Or we'll do split. Okay, so we can see in my unit two and then in Addie's unit two, that's where, you know, we're coinciding her being maybe mostly ninth grade students and my sophomores, you know, they're seeing that again. So usually if they haven't passed the pizza piece and they see that again, and then hopefully by the time they take the retake, I've taught that in addition to Addie um, since that's on there as well. Uh, anything else for uh, looking for keywords, Addie? Anything else that you would say? No? Okay. Uh, the other thing is, like I said, I do like the binder, so I always end up printing mine, but they do give you a nice printout. So if I go to view mine, um, up here where there's options, you can go ahead and uh, export as a PDF, which is, is wonderful. So I like a paper copy. So like as I'm teaching, you know, I can say, okay, I did this this day. I can maybe put a, a note by it of what day we covered that. You can also change the fields there. So because Addie and I, we've kind of not really um, delved kind of into stage two yet, you can print your map without having that because ours are both blank there. If I generate that, it's really nice. And like I said, it's a tangible thing. You can put it in a binder. You could have it if you had a sub coming in. Uh, so it might take a few minutes here, but it is really nice to go through. Uh, and they do have it color coded there. So they'll have your standards that are used, my top essential questions, the understandings and essential questions. And then it also has my lessons at the bottom as well. 